Hello, welcome back. This is set 5 of flashcards. If you have not followed initial 4 sets of flashcards, please uh, go through them. They are there in our channel. And don't forget to subscribe our channel. So this is the prosthetic MRI. This patient had infertility and uh, testicular biopsy showed mature sperms within the uh, biopsy specimen. So they, have, they wanted to rule out a obstructive cause for infertility. So they have sent it for a truss where we could find a prostatic cyst. So this cyst is in midline location. Here in axial MRI, you can see in midline the cystic lesion and in the sagittal MRI, you can appreciate a cyst in the uh, posterior aspect and approximately at the junction of peripheral and the central zones. So this is a classical case of prostatic utricle cyst. So cystic lesions of uh, lower male urogenital tract can be grossly uh, divided into intraprostatic and extraprostatic cysts. So prostatic cyst comes into, uh, it classifies into median cysts. So most, one of the most common paramedian cysts are ejaculatory duct cysts. Uh, extraprostatic cysts can be seen in seminal vesicle cysts and they can be associated with ADPKD and other diseases. So here, this uh, graphic illustration is showing uh, this is where the classical Mullerian duct cysts appearance. And uh, utricle cyst is this, uh, as in our case in the midline. So ejaculatory duct cysts are more paramedian and lateral in axial cuts you can appreciate. So you can also see some retention cysts and cysts due to BPH. Coming to second interesting case, this was a 60 year old male who presented with uh, constipation and uh, occasional bowel obstruction symptoms. You could appreciate on T1 slightly hyperintense um, lesion with the debris compressing on the rectum. So this is in the sagittal, you can also see some epithelial lined uh, lesion which is displacing uh, rectum and prostate. So this is a classical case of rectal cystic hematoma or also called tail gut duplication cyst. So this is a cystic pre sacrococcygeal anal canal mass lesion believed to arise from the remnants of tail gut. So MR imaging you should see a thin walled uni or multilocular lesion which is T1 hetero intense actually and can be T2 hyper intense. You can uh, have an enhancement sometimes in post contrast sections and uh, these are again duplication cysts. You may not see any communication with the regular bubble. So this is a classical case of tail gut duplication cyst. Differential diagnosis are retrorectal dermoid cyst, retrorectal neuroentric cyst, cystic sacrococcygeal teratoma and anterior sacral meniosis. Coming to third case, this patient had neuropathic symptoms and uh, he has uh, been sent for an ultrasound where you can find a thickened nose and an MRI was uh, performed uh, to delineate the associated uh, thickening. So you can see the enlarged ulnar nerve with numerous fascicles within and you can also see some amount of perineuritis and subcutaneous edema. So these are all classical features of ulnar neuropathy secondary to Hansen's disease. So early disease affects the intradermal nose which is uh, impossible to diagnose on uh, imaging. So whenever there is an active disease, you can see individual thickening of the fascicles that can be visualized on high resolution MRI as you can see the fascicular pattern so clearly in our case. Okay, coming to other case, there is a USG image of the thyroid showing intense vascularity of the thyroid. The patient was in hyperthyroid status and uh, you can see few fibrous septa within. These are the fibrous septa and intense vascularity you could appreciate. So this is diffusely hypoechoic thyroid with fibrous septa. So this is nothing but a classical case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis which is in thyroid inferno stage. That means normally Hashimoto's they present with hypothyroid, they can have increased vascularity and they can present with Hashimoto's So this was biopsied and uh, turned out to be a case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So finding fibrous septa is important. In chronic phases, you can also see numerous hypoechoic nodules within the lesions. So you can also see perithyroidal satellite lymph nodes in case of Hashimoto's thyroid. So this was a 23 year old young female and uh, you could see a huge right ovarian mass. You can see the compressed uh, uh, ovarian parenchyma. This ovary was not tossed and there was significant internal vascularity. You can appreciate ascites posterior to the lesion and you can also appreciate some mild pleural effusion. This is a classical meek syndrome where you get a ovarian fibroma. So this was a histopathology specimen showing a ovarian fibroma. Here you can see the ascites. So in a scenario of benign ovarian neoplasm, which is mostly ovarian fibroma, if you see ascites and uh, pleural effusion, this is nothing but a classical meek syndrome. 
Okay, another interesting case. This was a old age male presented with uh, gastric outlet obstruction. You can see the thickening of the wall and thickening was approximately 17.7 mm. And uh, you can see the grossly distended uh, stomach here. There's no significant lymphadenopathy or vomital stranding was seen. It appeared to be quite an operable tumor. Uh, there was no encasement of anything. However, you couldn't appreciate a umbilical nodule. So this classical umbilical deposit is nothing but a uh, Sister Mary Joseph nodule. Uh, this was named after Sister Mary who was a uh, attending nurse in Mayo Clinic. So she was regularly attending uh, gastric carcinoma surgeries and she found out that they, are in, they had uh, nodules at the umbilicus. So it was named after her. So this is nothing but metastatic umbilical deposit in a case of uh, intra-abdominal adenocarcinoma. Uh, coming to another interesting case, here this is an MRI uh, image showing a synovitis and metaphyseal edema and also epiphyseal edema. So you can also appreciate joint effusion. These are all classical features of neonatal septic arthritis. So you can see the capsular thickening, joint effusion in UHG. There is no destruction or fragmentation of uh, metaphysis or epiphysis. This is an x-ray. You can see the widening of the epiphyseal and physical plate widening. You can also see some moment of lucencies corresponding to destruction and osteopenia. And you can also see the enlarged uh, capsule. So this is a classical case of neonatal septic arthritis. This is a neonate. So most commonly caused by streptococcal B organisms. So joint effusion will be seen. USG is highly sensitive for a distending fluid capsule. MRI can demonstrate you synovial thickening and enhancement. So presence of marrow or soft marrow edema or soft tissue edema are more uh, clinching. So this is a classical case of uh, patchy meningeal thickening. So this is a Eiffel Tower sign. Whenever you see such diffuse patchy meningeal thickening, you should always think about neurosarcoid. In, uh, and tuberculosis in uh, developing world and also in IgG4 related uh, hypertrophic meningitis. You can also see in CNS lymphoma, Bassett syndrome, Wegener's granulomatosis, other things. But never to miss a classical patchy meningeal thickening. So unlike leptomeningeal enhancement, you may not see enhancement within the gyri. So this is a classical Eiffel Tower sign because of patchy meningeal thickening. Coming to another USG case, you can see a large hyperechoic area which is a plaque of calcium and this is a penile Doppler study. Here you can see the penile plaques of different sizes uh, outlining the corpora. So this is a classical case of uh, Peyronie's disease. So you can see the fibrous tissue plaques within the penile tunica albiginia causing painful deformity and shortening of the penis. Though clinical diagnosis is usually accurate, sometimes we can evaluate extension of the plaques and uh, whether penile septum is involved or not. So that is very important So in treatment aspect. Coming to the last case, so this is a classical cystic lesion in axial T2 image. This is a classical case of uh, ranula. So you can appreciate a tail sign. Tail sign is nothing but enlarged submandibular part of the lesion and the decreased or tail shaped uh, sublingual space lesion. This is uh, classical in cases of plunging uh, ranula. So differential diagnosis, oral cavity, lymph lymphangioma. So whenever you see this comet shaped lesion or if, if you can see a classical tail sign, you, you can diagnose confidently a case of plunging ranula. Thank you very much. Hope these cases were useful for you.